Compton faces challenges in closing the achievement gap and preparing students for the 21st century workforce. Our goal is to increase student achievement while giving students real world learning opportunities. To meet these challenges, Compton Unified has developed a framework for innovation. This framework is a PBL, blended learning, data-driven instructional model. Blended learning is definitely allowing for differentiated instruction along with personalized learning for each and every student. Another main feature of our blended learning is that students have opportunities to work in groups where they have authentic learning opportunities to solve real life problems. Students are definitely more engaged in their mathematics. Their data is also showing that they're improving in their learning and it's just a win-win for students. As we implement this new model and framework for innovation at Compton Unified, it is important that we think about the mind shifts that have to happen to change teaching and learning in the district. The first mind shift that we are focusing on includes leveraging the power of technology to differentiate, to individualize, and to redefine the learning experience. As we look at our second mind shift, we have to think about what we're going to use data for. We now use the data to inform our instruction and to create our small groups as well as our targeted learning outcomes. Our third mind shift is that around the role of the teacher. The teacher is now a facilitator and architect of the learning experience. With the blended learning program, we make sure that we're constantly checking the data so that we can differentiate the instruction so that it's being done immediately and it's not something that's um, delayed so we can suit their needs right away. I collect data having to do with Lexile levels and um, as far as proficiency and different levels of comprehension for reading and also their math. So I, all the Common Core standards that I can check using Dreambox and Achieve especially, I look and see what standards they are actually covering that they can reach mastery. If they're not, then I know that we need to target that. So when I differentiate my instruction and I pull them into a small group, I can do whatever it takes to get them to uh, master those skills. This semester I was introduced to GoFormative, which is an amazing website. The back end, the grading, and the assessing is unbelievably faster. Um, once the students submit the warm up automatically within seconds I see the result and from that so you can gauge exactly where they're at and then the ones that are struggling I usually pull them aside and get them in a group so that way I can give them more one-on-one -on -one instruction and help them get to where the rest of the class is. Okay so when we do the next one we plug in two what's two times 0.5? All right, guys, so right now you're going to get in your groups. So what I need is for my um, Imagine Learning students, please go ahead and at this time get your laptops and get into your designated areas. So this is the chart I use for my blended learning. Uh, it's very flexible. Every child has a clip and their number is on the clip. And I simply place them depending on the data that I've looked at for that week, where they need to go. Sometimes I have groups of four, sometimes it's groups of five or six. Um, it just depends. Here are my three stations. My first station is a direct instruction lesson. This is where I'm working with a small group right on my carpet, just me and them. This is going to um, vary depending on where we are in the curriculum or depending on their needs and gaps based on data that I've seen. Um, then we have a technology station. This is where students are working independently at their pace on the adaptive program that we have for them. Then we have our, right now, my, my station is a math facts, but this station can be more fluid. 
depending on what the needs of the kids are. So this could be a project based learning that they can do independently or collaboratively. Right now my students are really struggling with math facts. So we have a great program called Big Brains, which they are working on currently. This could also be if they're having trouble with a concept and I, they just need more practice. This could be them working for out of their curriculum book. This could be them working task cards on a specific standard or strategy. And this, this station I like to be more of like a collaborative station. So for each group, I hold students accountable by um, having an exit ticket. If a student's not understanding something and I can see it by their exit ticket, they'll even stay with me during the rotation for another group. Um, and then they'll join that group for the day. In my Dreambox and Technology Station, I can see exactly what they're working on and we can set goals for that. So I can say something like, I want you to have these two lessons completed by a certain amount of time. Each group has a way that I hold them accountable. I constantly remind the kids when I'm looking, I can see what's going on based on their scores. I know what they're doing. I know some students who are performing at a certain fluency when it comes to maybe achieve. If I see that the scores on achieve are not reflecting that, then I know right away that they're not maybe getting the most out of their experience during blend and learning time. So I just, I have to make adjustments and have those talks with the kids. Now that says plus 130, so that means that you've grown by that much. Okay, so that's wonderful. I'm so happy because you are working hard and you are showing great results. Um, in terms of collaboration, we do a lot of project-based learning. Why? They're going to hold each other accountable for what they're doing. And it's not teacher-centered, student-centered. The other thing that I like about collaboration that leads through project-based learning is the fact that they get real-world um, skills. When it's student-centered, they're becoming independent learners and they're developing those skills that they're going to need throughout their life.